much for joining us this morning. It's my pleasure. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Well, look, Vicente, an awful lot of talk about the electronics, like the guys in the office said. There's a huge buzz about, you know, all the changes that have come along. Now, we already spoke with, uh, with Marco the other day about the implementation of it, so I thought it would be nice to actually show what the riders see, what the riders feel, and what they actually do on bikes. So, as you can guys see, we now have a, we kind of have a, have a mock part of the bike. You can see lots of, uh, lots of cables around hanging off, but here we have the Manetti Morelli dashboard. Now, Vicente, am I right in thinking it's just Suzuki, which I think uses the dash. Yes, yeah, you're correct. And and also then we have the the button control unit there for the handlebars. Am I right? Is it uh, Suzuki and, and someone else? Yes, yeah, Suzuki and Ducati and Aprilia. Some sometimes use it. Okay, fantastic. So so what you're seeing here, this entire setup is essentially what Suzuki has, and uh, and those buttons are used by Ducati and Aprilia. So they they can just have a slightly different uh, different <coughs> excuse me dashboard, but. We send it. Um, a little demonstration, and I think what we what we'd like to to show is maybe you can first of all explain what uh, what the general dash is is showing us here. Sure. Okay. Uh, you can see this typical information is the RPM, the engine, the engine speed, so the riders can understand the RPM when to um, change gears and so on. This is called uh, a matrix dot matrix, and some special information can be displayed in here uh, by rider request so they can put pressures temperatures grip whatever and uh, these are typically a uh, lap time and some other important information also if there is an alarm on the bike or a flag by the um, by the marshals it is displayed in here Okay, perfect. So we so we have all this uh, all this info there, Vicente. Now, in terms of the actual parameters, because we we speak a lot about you know what's different from the factory software to the uh, to this now unified software. But I imagine they've they've still got they've still got most of all the all the parameters that they did before, like like wheelie traction control. Well, we don't really know what they had before, oh. huh? <laughs> because it's always been the secret. We know what they have now, and we can imagine what they had. Uh, Possibly much more advanced than today's system, but okay, not that much anyway. Uh, yes, some basic, typical strategies for sure they are now, and they were before, such as traction control, wheelie, engine brake. So these ones exist already, and uh, with uh, the unified software, riders can change the levels. So as to have more intervention of less intervention of one strategy, more or less power from the engine, and they can change that on the go with this switch panel. Okay, well, I think what would be nice uh, for our viewers is a little bit of a demo, well, first of all, that we actually talk about what the main strategies actually are, just in case anyone hasn't hasn't heard of them before, and then maybe you can actually change them for us and kind of show the motions that the riders have to go through when they're going absolutely flat out on track. So please bear this in mind, the demonstration we're doing now, this is something the riders will have to do going as fast as they possibly can. Okay, so Vicente, what shall, what shall we start off with? Shall we start off with, let's say, anti-wheelie, because obviously, okay, so they're getting on the gas and the bike just wants to go skywards. What, what is anti-wheelie? What is anti-wheelie is uh, one of the many strategies in the bike which understands when the bike is pitching up, is wheeling, which is undesired, undesirable and cuts a bit of power in order to bring the front wheel back to the ground, even if the rider is full, 100%. So the rider can concentrate on traje trajectories and so on, and doesn't need to be playing with the gas on the limit. The electronics can help him do that. And in terms of now changing the anti-wheelie on the screen, uh, if you just hold the, uh, hold the buttons close to it, maybe you can show us exactly what they'd have to push to do so. Okay, so we can imagine that the rider decides which are the parts of the track in which he can concentrate into pushing the buttons, which are very few. Uh, this, the main stride can give him two, maybe three seconds to think about what he wants to change and change it. There are different ways of uh, managing the switch panel. The one I'm showing you, I push this button in order to find the wheelie strategy. When I find it, I decide to change plus or minus. What does plus or minus mean? It's been decided by the technicians with the rider. So for example, I want more Oh, I changed, sorry. <laughs> Again, I want more wheelie. So I put plus one more wheelie means that the wheelie control is more intrusive. So it's going to cut more power. I want less. I would press minus one, and then from now on, the wheelie control is less intrusive. So this is good either for FP sessions, where riders need to try to change things to give proper feedback to the team, or during their race, if 
situations change, the fueling, the grip on the tyres, they can change these parameters to adapt the bike behaviour. But I think, I think one thing during a race uh, that's very important, something they're going to have to learn a lot about, is also traction control. Um, traction control, I think, obviously has a, a lot to do with opening the gas, the kind of connection from the throttle to the, to the engine. Is that, that's also something which you change uh, in, a, in a similar way? Yeah, for sure. Then I go to the traction control strategy and I can decide if I have more or less. We have three levels, okay? Three levels possible in this uh, unified software. So, so plus three, minus, no, or, sorry, minus one, zero, and plus one. The, the way the information is displayed, uh, teams can choose. So okay. rider can see whatever suits him better and he likes. So, so essentially a team could, could give it whichever numbers the riders want. Even letters. Anything. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, um, we've obviously only now played with uh, with two, uh, sorry, three of the buttons on the control panel. So we, uh, the the middle one lets them select what they want. So that's the yellow one, and then the green one or red one go up and down. What about the black one and the blue one? Okay, I must confess that I didn't prepare that once. Uh, so I will press them, but you won't see anything. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, with no. Cynthia. <laughs> You're a bad guy. <laughs> Uh, nothing happens. Okay. <laughs> I what? can explain you anyway. One is for the pit limiter, mm -hmm. which avoids the bike going above 60 kilometers per hour in the pit lane. The other one is the launch control for the launch exit. So the rider stops, presses the black button, launch control gets active, and then they know that they can perform the launch maneuver. So, so la launch control, essentially, they do they have to hold the black button down as they then just twist, twist, <laughs> twist it open, and then they go? Come on, we are not that stupid. <laughs> they just can push it once, uh -huh. they can read launch control active, and they, they know they are in launch control mode, they don't need to push anything anymore. So, and in that particular strategy, the engine RPM is hold to the level they want, so that the rider can just concentrate into putting gas 100%, playing with a lever and going as fast as he can. This might be a completely dumb question, but am I right in assuming that it would switch off the second you go into second gear, or, or then how, how does it know to, to turn off again so it doesn't limit the RPM? Oh, we are talking about strategies now. Okay, we developed a series of enablings and disablings. One of them is gear or speed, but all, all of that is calibratable, so the teams can choose. Okay, if you go to second gear, your launch control disables or not. When you reach 200 kilometers per hour or 150, these are some parameters which decide when the launch control can be exited or entered. For example, if rider goes at 200 kilometers per hour, makes a mistake, and pushes the launch control button, nothing happens. I mean that that I'm sure must also be be something for the uh, for the pit limiter as well, because obviously if you if you want to go fast and it and it restricts you to, to, to 60 kilometers now, I mean how does how does that that work? Does it does it just does it cut the fueling? Does it cut the ignition? What does it do? Well, uh, it does two things. One is that it closes the throttle by giving a smaller torque request, less power. Okay, so the throttle is going to close. A little even if the rider opens it the, the gas farther the throttle keeps quite closed then you you cut uh, ignition in order to well allow the engine not to go even farther so it's a rev limiter mm -hmm. these two things together okay well Vicente that's some fascinating information I think now we're gonna uh, do something a bit more visual just to just remind uh, remind our, our fans remind our viewers of this of this screen again so perhaps you can give us a little demonstration of a of a lap sorry i've just um i've just switched off the uh, screen i've just uh, i've just broken it we just have to plug this back in, uh, back in again 200 euros uh, 200 euros oh no <laughs> vicente could you do us a favor and just plug this back in again sorry then we can give it a yes right sorry about that guys that was absolutely my fault but as you can see very delicate uh, very delicate material here which of course goes on these bikes it's uh <laughs> Not a problem. Absolutely, my fault. My fault. Okay. We are <laughs> <we're> <laughs> exactly live TV. These things happen. These things okay, happen. We are okay, ready again. We're, we're ready again. Okay, so now I'm I'm going to pretend to be your rider, and yes. I'm now and we're going to do a little lap of Sepang okay. with this screen. Okay, so I'm coming down the main straight. Okay, but I'm actually finding that my bike's a little bit slow. Do you? Th so the anti wheelie I feel is coming in too much. Okay. Can you change that for me, yes, please? Yes, you are 300 kilometers per hour. Uh, yeah. You Okay, it's in here. So, plus one for you is more or less anti-wheelie, what you ever know. 
Okay. If you remember it, because writers are so focused that sometimes they forget about it. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> we did it already. Okay, so. okay, good. So so you've now given me less less anti-wheelie, so it's less intrusive, and I can now get on the gas a little bit more. That's right. Okay, so now I'm going to come into turn number one, and I decided, actually, do you know what? I'm not getting an awful lot of engine braking. Of course, I first had to go round one, round turn number two, maybe out of turn number three. Now the bike's upright a bit, and I can have another play with my switchboard. So now... Okay, so we go to engine brake strategy. Oh, I pass it. No, no, <laughs> But that's... And I change the level. That's done. Okay, fantastic. So now I have more engine braking for when I go into, into turn number five. Yes. Okay, so I'm now coming around turn number five, turn number six, and I'm finding that the bike's moving too much when I get on the gas. What would that be? Traction control? For example, or power delivery. So we can go to torque, as it is in the name in here, or traction control. What do you want? Well, which one? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm already past turn seven and eight, so we're coming up to turn nine. I've got a bit of a straight. I've decided to traction control. Okay, so let's go to traction control. Let's change it. Okay, so now, but but you said minus, so you've now given me less traction control. I don't remember. I'm a rider. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. So a little bit less traction. It was a mistake. Plus. Okay, so plus one, and now finally, oh, uh, you mentioned torque. Now, this is actually something which might confuse our riders a little bit, but we're coming around turn 10, 11, into 12, changing the torque now. I've hit the button. What would happen? Okay, so very fast. Torque is the yeah. relationship between the gas and the throttles. So if I have a very smooth relation, I open a lot, but the throttles open very little, I have a smoother engine, but less power. The contrary, if I want more power... For smaller movements, I can have a very big throttle opening, so intake air throttle. So I go here. If I want map A, map B, sorry, again. Map A, you see, it's letters now. Mm -hmm. Map A, map B, maybe map A is a softer map, map B is a stronger map. So from now on, when I open the gas, the throttle is open more or less or whatever I decide. Okay, great. Well, f uh, fantastic, Vicente, because I think I'm now coming around the uh, the final turn, so the next lap will hopefully be good with all these uh, with all these new settings. Uh, it's not a PlayStation. <laughs> <laughs> good. Well, look, uh, thank you very much for your time with this uh, absolutely fascinating demonstration. I'm sorry for uh, for disconnecting it earlier on, and uh, look, you know, we do uh, uh, you know we do hope we can see a little bit of a demonstration out on track later on uh, this afternoon with these guys. That's good. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Vicente. 200 euros you owe me. Okay? Two, 200 euros I owe him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you very much. I'll go and get some now. Cheers. <laughs> Back to you guys in the office. Thank you so much, Dylan. A brilliant insight there for Vincente Villar from Magneti Morelli. I love yeah. the fact that all these years of development, the incredibly expensive equipment, and Dylan managed to break it within about five minutes. But I think that it, not only were we educated, it's the first time I think anyone's really seen that kind of yeah. demonstration. Mm -hmm. But it goes to show. So hang on. The riders are riding at 330, 40 kilometres an hour. They've got nanoseconds. The bike is, you know, fighting them all the way. Wrestling. If you have five seconds on a straight, you know, that can sometimes be a long time. And they've got to change it all manually like that. And as we saw there, even in pit lane, with no pressure and not actually riding the bike, it's very easy to miss a menu. It's very easy. And as Vicente was saying, to forget what the settings are. Is plus or is minus? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very fascinating, I found. It, it, incredible. And that's something that lots of people talk about with Valentina Rossi is that, 